started right here at 601 with the first ever West Farm Market, oh, I always say that wrong, Ranch Market 150 naming committee meeting the evening of October 21st, 2020. Uh, this will be the only time that I start this meeting and get it going because we don't have a chair, but we will have one soon. But first wanted to do a roll call. Alicia, you can stay here. here. Or present. Anthony, David, Elizabeth, here. and quick reminder to turn the mics on whenever you're speaking from the dais, but I heard you. <laughs> Fred? Here. Gilbert? Umberto? Here. Karen? I'm here. Lino? I'm here. Nick? Here. Priscilla? Here. Ronald? Here. Summer? Here. Vanessa? Here. Wilma? Fantastic. Thank you all so much for being here. Next is citizen comment. This allows any citizen the uh, three minute time to speak to the committee. Do we have anyone here for citizen comment? I do not see one. So I'm going to now pass it over to Councilman Tobias for some opening remarks. Hello, good afternoon. Um, my name is Mike, Councilman Michael Tobias, and I would like to first say thank you all, everybody that's here in person and virtually for uh, serving on this committee. Um, uh, there is a, um, of course you know of the history behind of the reason why we're here. But with that, I really have faith in this committee that we can be able to come up with a name for our <clears throat> for this road that has such a great history behind it and let me uh, emphasize on that I grew up in this city in Kyle went to the schools out here and for a lot of longtime residents and people who have been here for a while this road has a special meaning we have a very uh, strong pride uh, school district it has a lot of tradition and as unfortunately there had been some controversy that goes along with it uh, we've had issues um, that had to deal with uh, the, you know, Confederate flag. We also had the Dixie. And we also just recently had the name change of the school. So Rebel Drive was seems to be have been the last one. But besides that, it goes back a lot further for myself and a lot of other people that I've talked to. Uh, this road was the main road that we would use or kids back in the day that would meet the Kyle children, the Kyle kids, meet up with the Buda kids at the high school and the middle school. So this road was traveled a lot, a lot as, as, uh, as it was back in the day. We had uh, bus drivers like uh, Tiny Arnold and uh, uh, good people like Don Brooks and people like that on bus number 12 that I, I can remember that used that road all the time as we were growing up. So going forward with this, um, I really appreciate everybody coming out today and serving on this committee, and I, and I have faith that we'll be able to have a name that you can do research on our city and our history, also review the charter amendments to see how we can go about uh, getting it done correctly. And uh, again, I just wanted to say thank you all for putting the time and the effort in the application process to be able to serve your city look at it in that sense, serving your city on this committee. So thank you very much. And here I'll turn it over to Samantha. Thank you so much. So now we're going to do introductions. Again, my name is Samantha Armbruster and I'm the Director of Communications for the City of Kyle. And we have the other staff liaison here with me. Hi, I am Steve Clemens. I am with the Planning Department. Uh, I'm, my title is GIS coordinator, which is Geographic Information Systems, and I also deal with addressing for the whole city, so um, that's why I'm here. So now we're going to go through the introductions of the committee. Uh, as 
on your agenda and what will be on the, the comments here. We'd like for everyone to introduce themselves, tell us your name, how long you've lived in Kyle, why you joined the committee, and if you are interested in the chair or vice chair position, uh, you know, why you're interested in that position. And not to put you on the spot, Mr. Guetta, but since you're at my top left, would you mind starting with the introductions? I'll go ahead and go on. Um, my name is Fred Guerra, and I've uh, been in Kyle since, um, for 20 years. I'm originally from San Marcos, uh, went to San Marcos High School, moved here uh, 20 years ago, and uh, live in Plum Creek, and been there since we moved here. Uh, volunteer for the committee, why? Uh, there's, uh, I served on the San Marcos City Council for 15 years, so I'm a firm believer in public service. Uh, and on there, as a council member, council member Tobias will concur that as council members, we had the ability and the capacity and the, 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 um, the obligation to appoint members to our commissions, to our boards. And we also had the planning and zoning commission at the time had all the responsibility of renaming cities. So I was deeply involved in that whole process. Uh, so it's uh, important to me to be part of the community. I firmly believe in public service. Uh, I'm working with the school district on the district leadership team. I have two grandsons that go to school here. Uh, I've served as president of the Texas Municipal League, uh, served on the board of directors of the National League of Cities, and have a pretty vast experience in, in city government, I'd say about 30 to 35 years. Uh, so I, I, I offer that to the committee as, as uh, something that might be of some help to the group. And uh, I do have an interest in serving for, for, as chair or vice chair, if that be the will of the committee. So I, I submit to you my qualifications and tell you that I'm ready to serve and willing to serve and uh, very able to serve. So I'll leave you at that. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Godfrey Weidig. Um, I have been in Kyle for almost 10 years moved from the Austin area, South Austin, to Kyle to raise my family. Um, I have a husband and two daughters here also in high school. Um, I wanted to join this committee because, one, I'm also a public servant. I have my uh, state employee, a City of Austin employee, and this is actually my first committee, so I'm super excited to be involved. And I really want to bring home, especially to my girls, that you can have a great city, you can do great things in your city, it's just you've got to put forth the effort. So um, at this point, I do not seek a nomination. Um, I do appreciate it, um, and that's it. Hi, my name is Karen Shields, and I've been in Kyle for about five years. And when I moved here, I fell in love with the city. Uh, the reason why that I joined the committee is because I want to be involved. I want to be involved with my city. Uh, my background is public service. I, I'm a retired IRS employee. was there for 28 years. And of the last 28 years, I, of the last 13 years, I'm sorry, I, I served as a, a team manager. And so I'm very familiar with committee work and, and getting things done and, and time frames and whatever. <laughs> so anyway, uh, when, when we had this chance to, to volunteer to do this, I felt like it was in my heart to be involved. So that's the main reason. Uh, now, whether, you know, I put my name down as a possible committee chairman or vice chair, uh, just whatever I can do to help this committee is fine with me. Uh, hello, my name is Lino Montoya. Uh, I bought my first house in Cayo about a year and a half ago, but I've lived in Buda my whole life. Uh, I do believe in public service, and I thank my fellow con council members for their service. And this would be my first uh, committee public service event, and I'm very excited about it. Um, just taking that first step into civic service, I guess. Um, as far as being nominated for a, a chair, vice chair, I don't think I'm qualified, but I would accept the nomination if given. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Summer Mann. 
my husband and I moved here six years ago, right before we got married, and then bought our house five years ago. Um, so we've we've lived here a little bit, and um, I'm really interested in just getting involved. I've been a stay-at-home mom for the past two and a half years, and I'm feeling like you know it's time for me to kind of branch out and do my own thing. And I saw the um, the opening. Uh, the uh, open up for the ad hoc committee and I figured give it a shot let's see what happens and um, I'm not seeking a nomination but if you know again like everyone else has said if, if you want to nominate me I'll step up I just want to do anything I can for my city howdy everybody my name is Anthony Davis, and I've lived in Kyle since 1997, when I was born here. I joined the committee because down at Texas State, when I had started my undergraduate education, it was in political science, and down there I gained a lot of knowledge about municipal government and public policy. And since I lived here all my life, I saw no other greater opportunity than to take that education, take that knowledge, and may as well put my foot in the door and get started right here. Um, and I, I would, just like everyone else, I wouldn't mind being nominated for a chair or co-chair. I don't necessarily seek it, but there's no other big name or whatever, anyone who wants to step up, I'd be willing to take that spot. Good evening, everyone. My name is Vanessa Westbrook. I've lived in Kyle for about 11 years now when I bought my house here in the area. Um, basically, I exited Austin looking for a little bit more peace and quiet, and I think I found it here for the past 11 years. Um, I have uh, wanted to join this committee because when I heard about the idea of making a name change, to me, it rung history. And history is one of the things that I've been doing now for a while. I serve on the Hayes County Historical Commission. And doing that work with the commission, there's lots of rich, rich history here in um, the Kyle area as among Hayes County. So I saw a name change as an opportunity to be able to provide an expertise in history. And I have it of Kyle in some of the work that we're currently doing across the county. Uh, there's lots of information, and my research, not memory, because I've only been here for 11 years, but research goes back here in Kyle back 150 years. And so the role that was referred to earlier has a rich history, not just 20, 50, 60 years ago, but 150 years ago in helping to form this city. And so I'd like to bring that area of expertise to this committee. Um, I am seeking perhaps the nomination for the chair or the vice chair. I believe my experience as being a certified parliamentarian, a university professor, an educator. Uh, I've served in several um, municipalities in regards to Austin, San Marcos, and now here in the Cal area. And I believe that I would have the expertise to move this committee forward in the task that we have at hand which we are trying to accommodate so that citizens can feel proud with what we come up with overall. Um, I actually bought a slight resume of myself. Pass that down, please. And unfortunately, those on virtual, we'll have to just send it to them by way of email. Because uh, I, I was, I'm an election judge. That's the other thing. And you know we're busy. So I had to quickly run home, change clothes, and come back so I didn't look real, real sloppy and that kind of stuff like that. But I'm sure you know what the election stuff is like right now. And I've actually lived in Hayes mm -hmm. County for 11 years, but I've been an election clerk for two and an election judge for eight. And so this is the busiest I've ever seen it. But good, people are voting. So anyway, thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to introduce myself and we look forward to moving forward with this group. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Ronald Gensel. Um, I lived in Kyle uh, for almost two years. Um, although my children have, have attended school here in Kyle for, uh, for three years. Um, moved to the Plum Creek area from the Niederwald area. 
Uh, my son was born over here at Seton. Um, uh, I joined the committee because it seemed like a great opportunity to get involved in uh, you know, what's going to be our forever home here that we raise our family in. Um, and I've always been interested in, in getting into public service, um, trying to make the transition from my current employment, uh, kind of gearing myself up towards more public service. So I saw this as a great opportunity. And in that respect, uh, I, I would like to seek a vice chair position uh, for experience. Uh, I have some, some experience with uh, the, the Menchaca uh, renaming uh, grassroots campaign that happened uh, finally last year. Um, and that was again based on the history of that community. Uh, so I kind of kind of got my feet wet uh, in that respect. Um, yeah, and that's all I have to offer for this committee right now. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're going to move to our virtual attendees, and I'm going to go ahead and call in order of my windows. So Alicia, would you go first? Yes, ma'am. Uh, my name is Alicia Bono. I have lived in Kyle for a total of ten years. Um, from moved here from South Austin. And um, my wife and I bought our house here three years ago and um, with our two teenage sons. Um, I joined the committee uh, because I have interest in the community. Um, I recently began getting involved with uh, more with the community uh, as a whole. Um, I'm on next door. I am working with one of the mayor candidates uh, with his campaign. I work with some of the lost and found pet groups. So, um, and I have read um, a lot of the feedback from residents as to uh, opinions on the renaming of formerly known Rebel Road. Um, and would like to not only have my opinion you know, and input on that, uh, as well as be, you know, having already had some feedback from residents have their voices heard as well. Um, I have no interest in serving as the committee chair or vice chair, um, as this is my first, uh, my first committee to be on, so I have no experience. Okay, thank you so much. Now, Umberto, you're next on my list. Hi there. Uh, I'm Umberto Aguin. Um, call me Bert. That's fine. Uh, I've lived in Kyle for the last three years. Um, we came originally from Boston, and uh, Kyle is a, a, just a whole different place for us. The kids love it. Um, it's, uh, it's somewhere that we plan on buying additional property and, and just making our life here. Um, Aside from that, um, my experience uh, is in the public transportation sector as well as private transportation. Um, I've uh, worked for companies such as Uber um, and Lime in the startup phase. Um, so I feel that makes me qualified, at least in the sense of understanding that private um, sector um, area. Uh, the other things uh, I am, uh, I did go to college. I, I uh, finished with political science um, where I ran numerous um, clubs. I was chair to a few. Um, as well as I worked uh, in the lobbying area for uh, Intel um, during my internship years. Um, basically, why I'm uh, wanting to be nominated uh, for either chair or vice chair, uh, coming from these companies uh, as, uh, as a manager and as someone who is over a lot of different people, I've, I've learned that uh, you have to uh, be open, but sometimes you have to be the gatekeeper, and, and I feel that uh, a chair uh, could be there to to help uh, keep the quorum and, and just the flow of things, um, as well as uh, it, it, it's time that we, we look outside of what already has that government experience and we look for that outside experience to bring in a different perspective on these meetings. Um, that's what I got. Um, I will say that uh, Cow is the best city I've ever lived in and, and anything I can do to make this place better, I will definitely do. Thank you. Thank you. Priscilla, you're next. Good evening, everyone. My name is Priscilla Harrell. Um, I am currently, I've lived here about 11 years here in Kyle, Texas. And of course, I love Kyle. Uh, to me, it I've seen it grow tremendously. Um, another thing is that why I've joined this committee is because I care about the city. I love the city. I've seen it grow. Um, I have um, been on planning and zoning. I've learned so much history here. Um, 
of course, not only do I care, I am a voice. I like to be a voice for myself. I like to be a voice for the citizens. Um, at this time, I'm not interested in being nominated for vice or chair. Thank you. Thank you. Nick, you are up. Hi everyone, my name is Nick Landis. I moved to the area in 2003 when I came down to school for Texas State. Um, I've lived in Kyle since 2006. Um, this is my first time serving in a, a municipal capacity of any sort. Um, sorry about that. But I am happy to be here and, and glad, glad to be doing um, civil service, I'm not um, a, a chair visit or anything. Thank you, Nick. David, you introduce yourself. We are not hearing you here, David, one second. We might need to get uh, your audio connected. And I also see someone online, the last uh, digits of the cell phone are 067. Would you unmute yourself and announce your name? Okay, David, I think your audio is connected now if you want to unmute and try again. No, we don't hear you still. No, I apologize. Um, you are more than welcome to try leaving and reconnecting. See if that might work. And I'm going to unmute the other caller that has the last digit 067. Would you introduce yourself? Okay, I think you can hear me now. Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, so I am David Glickler. I am not interested in serving as a chair or vice chair. I have lived in the Kyle and Buda area for 20 years. I have served in uh, public roles. I was a prosecutor for the state for 20 years, and I was the judge in Hayes County Court at Law Number 2 for four years. I live in Plum Creek now, and quite honestly, when this issue came up, having been here for so many years, uh, and I saw how much angst it was causing the community. Both of my children grew up in the school district and graduated from Hayes High School. And my career and my strength is in consensus building, mediation. Uh, I am a certified mediator, a former judge. And I just wanted to join the committee so that I could be sure uh, to help make sure all voices are heard. I have friends, clients, people in my life from all different backgrounds. I grew up on the East Coast. I've been in Texas for 30 years now. And uh, people find me as a voice of reason, but also someone who's going to protect everyone's opportunity to be heard. And that's all I want to do is just make sure that every segment of this community has an opportunity to be heard on this issue. Because when I saw how contentious it was, uh, I wanted to contribute. I've been in private practice for two years now, and I do have the time and opportunity to give back. And so that's why I joined. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone. Um, so at this time, we are going to do the elections for chair and vice chair. The way that's going to work is I'm going to bring up on the screen all of the names that I heard um, from the committee members that were interested. Let's see if that pops up on the screen for everyone. Do you see it on the dais? Perfect. Everyone remotely, are you all able to view that list? Okay. And so we're going to do a roll call. Everyone will give one name. And the one with the most votes will be chair. The one with the second most votes will be vice chair. Make sense? And we'll just go in the same line that we did for introductions. So we will start here with Mr. Guetta, work our way down the dais, and then we will go to the virtual again if you'll just give one name uh, of the list that's presented. I'd like to vote for myself. Okay. Um, Mr. Guerrero, here. I vote for Fred. No, Fred. 
I'm also going to vote for Mr. Carrera. I will vote for Vanessa Westbrook. I'll vote for Vanessa Westbrook. Uh, Vanessa, thank you. Alicia? Vanessa. Bert? Vanessa. Priscilla? Vanessa. Nick? Vanessa. David? Vanessa. Okay, so the chair will be Mrs. Westbrook, Vice Chair, Mr. Guetta. And officially, I am going to uh, turn the mic over to you, Chair Westbrook. Uh, next on the agenda, though, is the staff presentation. So I will go ahead and bring up that presentation okay. and let Steve begin. So basically, um, we have a pretty s simple job on its face. Uh, <laughs> just find a name and then I'll take care of a lot of the rest of that process, dealing with the uh, post office and the emergency services. That's where I come in. Um, so the job of the committee is to actually come up with that name. And how you do that will be up to you. Um, we can give some suggestions, but in general, um, this is a, uh, a state road, correct, ranch to market uh, 150. So TxDOT actually gives local cities the authority to do just what we're doing, to rename portions of their road. So um, they make it very easy for us. Our city charter has a few guidelines. Um, basically, it just says that city council can uh, initiate a name change uh, as long as it's um, voted on in a meeting in as a resolution, that's all it takes. So once you give that recommendation of the name to council, that'll be their process. Um, some of the guidelines in the charter, there, there's a, only a few things that it says the name should be appropriate to the particular public place by reflecting of native wildlife, history, geography of the area, natural features, or honoring individual families or individuals that are significant to Kyle. Um, and it also says consideration should be given to reflecting the city's ethnic and cultural diversity. Um, as far as the, the actual process of changing the name after you, you choose the name, um, notifying the residents and the businesses. Uh, the city will take care of that, so that's not part of the committee's responsibilities. <laughs> um, unless you have any questions. I, think I did put up on the slide, but I realize that this is an old slide. Obviously, it has not been renamed itself for the renaming committee. But Steve, if you want to kind of talk through. Oh, okay, yeah, this was, uh, I think, the original council presentation um so yeah it's a, it's about a mile and a half stretch i'm sure you're all familiar with mm. where it is uh so there's only 14 businesses and 10 residential properties um, but there's also um, the post office which is a little bit unusual situation and I did speak to the postmaster, and um, I'll, we'll have to work with them to notify all those P.O. box holders who would need to change uh, all their information as well. Um, so the, uh, the street signs are, will be taken care of by Public Works, our, our own department, and uh, Hometown Kyle actually has 
slightly different style of street signs. Um, so we'll work with that neighborhood to, to make sure that matches uh, on, on their uh, end of things. So um, that's pretty much it. Any questions for Steve? I do have uh, two questions, Steve. Uh, number one is, um, do, have you determined the uh, financial impact that it'll have uh, on those businesses that are located on the street right now in terms of address change and stationary and things of that nature? No, we really don't have an exact number because um, each of them are a little bit different. Some of the more local small businesses may have more impact on them. Um, we did do um, a little bit of a study on the list of things that may need to change yes. for both the business and residential. So we'd be happy to bring that back to the committee for review. And it would be something that once you look at the list, you may see other things that are missing. So that can be maybe a part of the committee's study, if you yes. will, if, if it was a desire of the helpful. committee. And those people on, the, on those commercial properties, they're aware. I mean, this is not going to be a shock or a news to them, right? Well, you know, we're so early now in the process for a possible rename, but definitely if and when a rename uh, was okay. suggested and recommended to council, there would be time for that notification process. Okay, one final question. How do you define significant to Kyle? It's in the, what you gave us. On that charter, it was on that, that PowerPoint. Right. right. Um, I think that's up to you, yeah, honestly. I agree. Uh, let, me, let me tell you why I asked. When I started on the San Marcos City Council, uh, the school board always had a policy that had to be named after somebody dead. So I mean, so that's not anything that we're confined by. Is that correct? No, there's very minimal guidelines in the charter. Okay. What was up there before was all that's stated, really. And, and that doesn't mean that they would have had to have been a citizen of Kyle. No. Yeah. That's not a requirement at all. I didn't think okay. that. Um, I will add that I, I am also the uh, liaison to the county emergency services with, dealing with street names and addressing. So um, part of my job is to make sure that whatever name is chosen is not a duplicate name somewhere else in the area or uh, a spelling that emergency services would have trouble with. So once you choose your name or narrow down a list, then I can give some guidelines on as okay. to whether it would actually be approved by okay. emergency services as well. Okay. Thank you. All right. So I had a couple of questions. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And um, one of them was this information that we're looking at right now. I'd like for everyone on the committee to be able to have that in their hand. Send it to us electronically, please, because I think as we go through the process of bringing up names, we can look at this list and say, does it fall into one of these categories? I think that would be helpful. Certainly. And I also think that as we look at this first bullet, we can come up with a consensus on interpretation. For instance, I didn't believe when it said a significant individual that it had to be a person in Kyle. It could be you know, somebody significant, period. So, but I think that's a discussion that we can have as we move through this process. The other one that I was wondering about when I first heard about this committee and said, this is something I think I could really um, be able to help with, was the names of the city, names of streets we already have. Mm -hmm. Because I remember in city council meetings, we were, names were coming forth to say, how about this one? And then, oh, we already have, we already have a street for that. You know, well, what about this one? Oh, we already have a street for that. And the other thing I think, too, is that we have some um, public properties that have names already. And it might not be in the best interest of the city to name a property and a city with the exact same name. So if possible, mm -hmm. we could get some degree of listing or something like that that would, might be helpful to us. Or if you're going to be at our meetings and you're able to have a list and something pops up, and you can say, well, you know, over off of 150, we already have a street name that right. that might be real helpful to us overall. So those are sure. the two big things that I wanted us to uh, have. One was this list. And if there's anything else 
in the charter that will be beneficial to us as we're making our decision that we can have in our hands when we may be sitting down and I'm a, I'm a night owl, so midnight is when I'd be looking at this, doing a little bit of work, or somebody else would be at 7 o'clock in the morning, et cetera. But these kind of things that we would have in the form of being able to not call you all about, but actually have in our physical hands, that would be wonderful. Okay, we can do that. Okay. Any other questions? Does a database like that exist already online through any kind um, of Kyle, City of Kyle portal? There's a city charter that's online. Just as far as for the, the street names. For the street names. Yeah. Yes and no. It's not easily accessible right now, but I'm working on that. Honestly, if you, you can just put type of the name in Google Maps and see if something comes up, that'd be a good first check if you're on your own. I have a question. Go ahead. Um, it was stated previously that there were 2,000 PO box holders at the, at the post office. Why would they rename their address? Um, they use a PO box, so their address honestly wouldn't change. Good question. Uh, in talking with the postmaster, he actually said that we would need to contact them because many of them use the name of the street as a physical address. There's a lot of deliveries that will not deliver to a P.O. box, Correct. even though it's a post office and they, <laughs> it's obviously a P.O. box. Right. If they have that physical street name in there, then it gets delivered. So um, that, that's uh, something we really can't get around from the postmaster. Okay, but he's, he's referring to the idea that time be given to the individuals with the P.O. box just to give them a heads up that there's a name change coming. We That's would. the bigger thing, because I'm thinking about when I previously have had a P.O. box, it was P.O. box 153637, Austin, Texas, and the zip code was different, but there was no listing of a street in any way, shape, or form. So I think it's what he's saying is that we need to be able to provide notice to everyone just saying, heads up, there's a name change coming, that right. sort of thing. Right. Okay. Good question, thank you. Okay, I had good. a quick question. Um, when addressing to somebody or you know, addressing an envelope at all, would they use RM150 or would they use the name of the street or that, that we would be choosing? They can actually do both. The, the post office has what they call an alias list for a lot of situations like this, the multiple names for the same street, and it's, and it's commonly a, a numbered county or state road that has another name like this. So they will deliver to either one. Okay, thank you. Great questions, anyone else? Online. Yes, go ahead. I just want to follow up since we have a small business there in Kyle and a P.O. box. There are times we have physical deliveries where we use the Rebel Road address of the post office. So uh, I'm just echoing what he said earlier that that's why if you have a P.O. box, you need to know what the street address of it is. And it is used in business purposes. Thank you. Okay. So it looks like uh, the next thing on the agenda is for us, because we have the staff presentation done. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. We did the staff presentation on the process of the naming fee. And so, Samantha, the staff presentation of the purpose, duties, and meeting requirements? Yes, ma'am. And so I have put that on the screen, and it's pretty straightforward. And Steve alluded to some of this earlier, that the, the purpose of this committee, it is an ad hoc committee, but it is to consider a rename of the Ranch to, West Ranch to Market 150 um, and to take that recommendation to city council. Uh, and, and that recommendation would ultimately, and decision would be made by city council for that. Uh, the duties are to come up with a, the possible name. 
uh, meeting requirements is that you, you cannot be absent for three consecutive meetings, otherwise your position would be vacated and, and replaced by appointment by city council. The Republic, because even though this is an ad hoc meeting, it is a committee of the city of Kyle, therefore uh, it is posted with the public notice. So on our cityofkyle.com website on the calendar, you'll find the meeting information publicly listed there with three days notice. The agenda and the minutes would be posted there as well. And this is uh, required per the Open Meetings Act. And we'll, we will make sure to send some information to all the committee about the Opens Meeting Act if you're, if you're not familiar with, with the rules behind that. And as we've already introduced ourselves, we are your staff liaisons. So that's pretty much in a nutshell uh, my presentation for the, the purpose and the duties of the committee. Uh, Madam Chair, I have one final question. Good. Uh, are we going to always meet here? That is up to committee. So well, that I, is I guess my question, do you have to have a recording, either a video or absolutely. audio? Absolutely, yes. For the city? Yes. So is the answer to that probably yes? Well, yes. so we do, <laughs> we, are, uh, we are small but a mighty IT uh, friendly city. So okay. while, while we, don't have, we don't have to be in this room for that recording to happen, if the committee decided to go virtual only, we would still be able to record that. Okay. Um, so we really truly can make it work, uh, virtual or hybrid or in person uh, alone. Thank you. You're okay. welcome. All right. Um, I guess one of the questions that I have is initially when this ad hoc committee was discussed among city council, there was a timeline. Uh, I believe it was October 1st to of some, it was October 1st, I remember that date, and I don't remember the end date, but I know since we are delayed in that mm -hmm. getting started, mm -hmm. the 20th, mm -hmm. what is the new timeline that we are given in regards to when our work needs to be done? So um, the purpose, duties, and meetings requirement that you see on your screen, that is what was presented to city council to form this committee. Okay. So you actually are empowered to okay. create that timeline okay. and to create your meeting schedule. So while there may had, uh, have been some conversation early on about what it could be, right. it really is uh, up, to up to the committee okay. now. Yes, Perfect, perfect. Okay. I also wanted to share with my committee members that the Open Meetings Act is a part of the open meeting handbook, which is provided by the state of Texas. And you can easily get that document online to read through if you don't know where it is. Uh, you can put open meetings act, texas.gov will come up and then that particular uh, document can come up that you can just have an electronic copy because I, I want to say it's quite a few pages, mm -hmm. you know, save some trees. That sort of thing. But uh, they'll have specific information in there about the meetings that we would have. And I'm very familiar with it as a parliamentarian for the historical commission. We have to use it consistently. So I actually have a printed copy of it. Uh, so I just wanted to let, let everybody know about that. So I'm guessing at this point in looking at the agenda, if my committee members don't have any questions at this time, that we talk about our meeting schedule. So um, any, I'm, I'm opening the mic right now. Any suggestions on what's the best time to meet? Right now, I'm thinking that this, um, this particular location might work well for us because I see it being a little bit central for everybody to get into and get to. And if for some reason you can't make it, we have the virtual option to be able to use, and which I really like. Uh, because we have the combination of both worlds for the most part. So I would like to uh, get some um, opinions from you all in regards to having this as our meeting location site. Or if you have a better idea that could provide us the technology that we need, by all means, please bring that forward. Yeah, I like meeting here on, on Wednesdays at 6. Works, works well for me. Okay. I'm generally available any day of the week, so, uh, so this works well for me too. Okay, all right. And if I may, um, yes. when we did the survey of all the committee members, mm -hmm. uh, Monday and Wednesday evenings did seem to, to be the most available for all. Okay, okay. All right, well, it sounds like we were liking this, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, 
put forth that we do Wednesday 6 p.m. and I like to call a vote for that from everyone in regards to whether they agree or disagree with us having Wednesday at 6 o'clock and then we'll start looking at specific dates for the most part. So uh, in keeping that in mind, that was the reason why I was asking whether or not we had a timeline because now as we come up with our timeline, we can think about what days, you know, what day, dates, I'm sorry, not days, dates works best for us as we go through this process. Keep it in mind that the holidays are upon us soon and those kinds of things. We don't want to rush through this, but we do want to have time to be able to have great discussion and be able to put something forth that we believe that our neighbors would be proud of. Because I think that's what we're looking at overall. What are our neighbors saying? We represent the neighbors the way I see it. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and put to a vote um, that, actually, can I get someone else to make a motion that we do Wednesday 6 p.m.? Sure, I move to uh, have meetings on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Second. Okay. All right, good, thank you. Um, in regards to us having a secretary or someone to collect the minutes, Samantha, how is that going to work? I will volunteer myself oh, okay. to do that. <laughs> I <Sounds> second that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we know that we're going to do Wednesday at 6 p.m. And so now my next question is, and we think about the, the fullness of time, are we thinking that we need to meet weekly? Um, every other week, um, once a month. What's what's your take on that, uh, ladies and gentlemen? I move we meet. I think weekly. that it depends on the timeline. Okay. You know, um, I think weekly would be best if we're wanting to get this knocked out. Okay. All right. So one of our community members says weekly might work. Other other opinions? Weekly works for me. Through the, through the chair, I have a question. Go ahead. Um, uh, uh, what is the timeline that the city of Cow has imposed on this committee to come up? That, with that, was, that, was uh, the, they have... that was the question that I asked. We decide the timeline. The, the oh, city, we do. Okay. Yeah, All they right. didn't give us have it done by this date. And that was the question that I asked based on the information that I received watching city council meetings. We can d make a decision on that timeline. And we might not want to do that today. We might want to give this a little bit of thought and look at the fullness of time of how we think we're going to be able to move forward with this process and come up with a tentative timeline for ourselves. And I'm not so I'm saying that we don't do that today. We think about it for a little bit. And if we're planning on doing weekly, which we'll get some consensus on in just a minute, then perhaps next week we come back with some idea of the timeline, keeping in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that the holidays is coming before us. And that'll be here before you know it. Remember, um, we're voting in two weeks, November. That means Thanksgiving. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. So, um, so we've, okay, so any more questions? Because I'm going to go ahead. We already called, uh, and I'm sorry, we were in the middle of a, uh, of a motion, and we've got a second, so we need to vote on that, which we didn't finish doing. Let's do that, and then we can move forward with some other things. So I'm going ahead and... Um, call for a vote on Wednesday, 6 p.m. And just raising your hand with an I will suffice. We add weekly to that as well. Um, I need to meet weekly. I'm going to bring that up on another okay. one. Okay. All right. So the question was, are we adding weekly to that? That'll be another motion for, for right now. Because I didn't hear from everybody about weekly. I only heard from everybody for the most part about Wednesday, 6 p.m. So, so we're just voting on the day right now? Yes, the Wednesday, okay. 6 p.m. is what we're voting on right now. And if in favor, just raise your hand with an aye will suffice. Okay, looks like it is uh, unanimous. All righty. Okay, so now the next discussion we need to have is the time frame in, in regards to how often we should meet. And right now, I think maybe one or two people said weekly. Any other discussion? Any other recommendations, comments, etc. about weekly? Nick, I, I'd like to suggest that. Wait, two people were talking. Hold on. One, okay, somebody. <laughs> I don't remember everybody's Go name ahead, at the moment. Go ahead. I'd like, to suggest, I'd like to suggest that we set the next meeting and have that meeting discuss it because okay. I'm looking ahead at this 
And two weeks from today is the day after Election Day. So the next two weeks are going to be filled with elections. Right. The following Wednesday is Veterans Day, which is a holiday. Okay. And then two weeks after that is the night before Thanksgiving. So I think we need to discuss what our timeline is going to be before we set the meeting. Because, as you said, uh, Madam Chairwoman, with the holidays coming upon us, and, and when you look at it this way, that the next two Wednesdays are Election Days, the 11th is Veterans Day. Um, I, I think, and the way that the community responded to the uh, city council's proposal, we need to take our time with this. This isn't something we should try to rush through over the course of the next eight weeks. And so if that's the case, I don't know that meeting weekly would work, but I think our next meeting should be to set our timeline and then our agenda and discuss this out in further detail. Okay, thank you. That's what I want to hear. Any other opinions? Somebody else was speaking. Yeah, okay. Nick Landis, I'm online. My my view was similar to David's, that we should set a meeting for um, next week, that we could still have, um, talk about our timeline and maybe start entertaining suggestions and figure out our format in which we want to um, debate those topics. And then have a little longer time that we could all individually do our research and figure that stuff out and then have something set because I don't think Veterans Day on a holiday is a good Wednesday for that or the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. I already know that I'm traveling that day, so that's not going to be good um, for me. So having something sooner now and then having a little bit of a gap and then being more regular after that, I think might be a better choice rather than just setting every week we're going to be meet, meet on Wednesdays. All right, thank you. Thanks for, that's what I need. I needed to hear some input from you all. And please know that as we go through this process, it's always about us working collaboratively to have input on where we're going to be going next for the most part. That, that's my style is what, what's the consensus and everybody has a say so before, before we make decisions and those kinds of things. And so to anybody else in regards to our options, one, well, the option that's brought before us right now is that we meet next week, next Wednesday at 6 o'clock, and then we can kind of play it by ear by then in regards to, because that was the other thing. I wanted to take a look at my calendar to see what's going on. I'm free because I'm retired now, but there's an election going on, so technically I'm not free right now. But anywho, um, but next week, next Wednesday, can I? Can we get an agreement on that one, that we meet in the same place, same format, same time, and bring some ideas with you? I will put together a calendar, say, for all the rest of October, November, and December, so we can just see, oh, we got to take that date out, oh, we got to take that date out to kind of get a sense of where we're going. I actually see us going into this with the new year in regards to the conversations that we want to have, the different kinds of research we want to bring back with us and those kinds of things overall. So I'm not saying we're going to drag this out to next May. That might not be the case, but I do believe that we'll have to go into January simply because of November and December. So any, any uh, comments or suggestions on that? My hope was to you know, be able to start the new year with the new name. That was kind of where my thought but, you know what? Can I mean, I know, and, and my thought too was, wouldn't it be best to line out a, a goal to have this done, you know, before, and then line out the schedule as to how how often, you know, if we, if we want to be done by the end of the year, you know, then, you know, if, if Wednesday isn't conducive for everybody to meet because of the dates that it falls on, then maybe we might need to switch that to, say, Monday. Just a thought. Okay. Uh, Madam thank Chairwoman, you. Thank you for Madam that. Chairwoman, given that comment, I would move that we meet next Wednesday at six o'clock at Kyle City Hall for the purposes for the purpose of calendaring our plan. And as she just said, I'm sorry I forgot your name, but we figure out a deadline and then work meeting dates out back from them. And we all come to next Wednesday's meeting with our calendars prepared to set it up. And I would make a motion to that effect. Okay. And I would second that. All right. I second. We have a motion and a second that we do Who's meet. That was that a second? I'm sorry. I didn't catch the second. I think it was online. Who, who, mm. who said second? Bert. Okay. Bert. Bert, thank, thank you. you. Bert, okay. Uh, Alicia or Bert, yeah, one of us. 
All right, so we have, there was a, a motion as well as a second that we do come and meet next Wednesday at 6 p.m. We bring our calendars and we would be able to put together a, a timeline, a time frame so that we can move forward from there in regards to uh, our, our next steps. All right, so that is the motion that's on the floor. And if you agree, well, well yes, ma'am. Yes. She's voting. Um, just wanna, I just got noticed that the city council meeting is Wednesday the 4th, so that just to put that on the calendar as well. That just the city our council? Future, our future scheduling, I'm sorry. So we might not be able to meet at City Hall. Oh, next next week? No, no. we'd be good next week. Uh, on the but as we start on thinking it oh, about okay. future yeah. week. Oh, okay, well, I, I can easily send a potential calendar to you and you guys can point that kind of stuff out to us. And when we're coming with our calendars next week, that'll be part of that discussion. So, okay, all right, I thought she was saying something else. All right, if you are in agreement with what, we, what the motion is, we meet next Wednesday, 6 p.m., we bring our calendars and we put together a tentative timeline, which would give us somewhat of a vision of where we're going and where we're going to end with this and time that we're going to be able to use. So if you're in agreement with that, please raise your hand. Okay, sounds good. All right then. Okay, so here are my thoughts for next Wednesday. You bring your calendar. Now, we already know that Samantha has done a survey on the best times to meet. That was either Monday or Wednesday, and it was 6 p.m., so we came up with Wednesday. So knowing that, we're going to go forth with that. But then we need to take a look at what's coming up on our calendars individually, collectively as a community that we need to pay attention to as we put together some tentative and notice I'm using the word tentative timeline because there could be some actions that may change between now and then. So our tentative timeline will give us some degree of a vision of where we're going and where we're going to be ending. But note that that timeline could possibly be tentative by undue circumstances. And we are familiar with undue circumstances, aren't we? I believe it's called COVID. So let's keep that in mind. So um, anyway, timelines, um, calendars, you may be already having conversation with neighbors, that kind of information you may want to bring with you. Actually, before you leave this evening, I did get a letter from the president and founder of the Kyle Cultural Awareness uh, Group. I'm sending a copy to each of you here. And Samantha, I emailed that to you earlier to and please I, send to I everyone. I did send that out. Okay, yes, thank you. And this is a citizen who has a small group here, and she has actually submitted a name for us to consider. So be thinking along those lines of if you have to talk to some group, some particular person, if they would like to give you some written something to bring back to us for us to be thinking about. Because right now we're talking to our neighbors and we're talking to the community in regards to the various thoughts. The idea is this. We are going to come up with a name for Rebel Road. It's not in discussion whether we should or shouldn't. We are. And our, our task is what is that name going to be so that we can present to city council. So it's not about debating with anybody about not changing. It's going to be changed, period. So let's not focus on that. What the name is going to be, that's the question. And from my understanding, they would like for us to submit a name to them for, uh, uh, to, for us to recommend a name to them. So that's our task at hand. So talk to neighbors, family, friends, etc., and see what they're coming up with. And then as we start getting the discussion, we can start bringing forth these names and talking about the pros and cons of such a name. How does it flow into our uh, charter description? How does it fit into that? Because I think that's our lens to be able to look at, okay? All right. Other questions, comments, concerns? Yes, I have a, a comment I'd like to for the committee. Uh, I, you know, they put this committee together to, to, for us to decide this name and uh, taking into consideration all precautions that we can take and, and, and carefulness. Uh, I do think we would be doing the, the community a service by, by naming this street sooner than later. And I do like the mantra of uh, new year, new name. So mm, okay. just for everyone okay. to consider. Okay. 
Thank you very much. Anybody else? Um, will the uh, our future meetings all have a, a section for citizen input? I assume the answer to that is yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Every and meeting would have a citizen. Do we have access to everybody's email that's on the committee? Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. That was going to also mention that to please send out the contact information for everyone's name on the committee because I'd like to be able to say, okay, you and not say a name. <laughs> and you actually say a name. So, because I was, oh, I can't remember what his name is. So, anyway, that would be very helpful, please. And I appreciate you having name tags for us um, here that are sitting at, in this dais area. That's very helpful. Wish we could have names on the bottom of people on the screen so that would be helpful but we'll just have to remember names like Bert I got that one because <laughs> he said something <laughs> so that would be also very helpful to us please well we, they are on there it's just so small oh that okay it's, okay it, it's hard to show but okay I cannot read the name tags in front of the people. Okay, there. And that, so it works both ways. <laughs> yeah. But how about this? When I send out the the contact information, I'll try to get a photo Great. so we can have a photo with the the names. Maybe that can help. So would you like everyone to send you a photo? I would love saying? for y'all to send me a photo. Okay, I'll All send right. that in an email request. Thank you. Mask or no mask? Or no mask. Yeah. Like a little directory. Yeah. No mask would be helpful. <laughs> Picture yeah. direct. Oh, yes, and take your mask off when you take your picture. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, very good. All right, then. Um, so any staff updates that you have for us? Not today. That's just a placeholder. It will be there every meeting. Okay. All right, thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I would like for um, to adjourn this meeting. I'll move to adjourn. Uh, who said that? <laughs> I think that was David. David. That, that, yeah. <laughs> a second. All right, so we have a motion and a second to adjourn the meeting. And I will see you all next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Can you get us out that information, contact information out ASAP? Absolutely. Like, you know, tonight or tomorrow, or tomorrow, please. Yes, ma'am. And that way, by all means, do not hesitate to oh contact me. I actually have business cards for everybody. Uh, so you have my email address as well as my cell number. Texting me works real well, especially, you know, I'm an election judge. I'm all over the place. So texting works real best for me if you have some bright idea. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I look forward to our work. Till next Wednesday, 6 p.m. Thank you much. Thank you.